phosphorus halides are made by reacting elemental phosphorus with halogens. So we're going to take a look at two groups of phosphorus halides, which are phosphorus trihalides and phosphorus pentahalides. So we're going to go ahead and start with phosphorus trihalides. Now right here in front of all these terms, I should have the word phosphorus, but I just left it out not to be redundant and not to use too much of my board space. So it's just assumed that phosphorus goes before all these terms. So we have phosphorus trichloride, phosphorus trifluoride, phosphorus tribromide, and phosphorus iodide. And so notice here that we have P every time, which of course stands for phosphorus in its elemental form. And then it's coupled each time with a different halogen. Here it's chlorine, here it's fluorine, here it's bromine, and here it's iodine. Now over here we have phosphorus pentahalides. So here we have phosphorus pentachloride, phosphorus pentafluoride, phosphorus pentabromide, and phosphorus pentaiodide. Then again we have P every time, which stands for phosphorus in its elemental form. And then we have the halogens, chlorine, fluorine, bromine, and iodine. Now you may have noticed a pattern here in the prefixes. So there we have tri, here we have penta. So tri of course stands for three, and penta stands for five. And so that prefix right there is in front of all these except for iodide, that's the exception. And then penta is in front of all of these. Now, what that means is, is that's telling you how many of the halogen there is going to be. See, the subscript is right here of three, telling you how many atoms of each of these halogens there are. So it's saying there's going to be three chlorine atoms, or three fluorine atoms, or five bromine atoms, or five iodide atoms. And so look for those prefixes because they tell you a lot. Now, like I said earlier, these compounds are made by reacting elemental phosphorus with halogens. So we have an elemental phosphorus along with a halogen. And so that's forming something we're looking for. And so right here you notice that this would be tribromide. And it's just two moles of tribromide. And so that's how we're making these halides. That's how we're coming up with these phosphorus halides. Now, when these compounds come into contact with water, they form phosphorus oxyacids and hydrogen halides. So we have these examples right here. So this right here is phosphorus trifluoride, which we have right there. And then right here we just have water. And so what we're forming here is phosphorus oxyacids, which we have right here, an oxyacid. And then also a hydrogen halide, which is right here. Then the same thing is occurring right here. Here we have phosphorus pentachloride, which is right there. And again, that's coupled with water to make a phosphorus oxyacid, which we have there. And in addition, we get a hydrogen halide. Now, one last note I want to make about something up here when I talked about how to make a phosphorus halide. If excess bromine is present, so say we have this right here, then what we can do is we can react that with bromine to get something bigger. So say we have excess this right here. We're going to take that, and so we're going to add that to a halogen, so like two atoms of bromine. And what we're going to get from that is phosphorus pentabromide. So that's just in the case that you have excess bromine. Then you're adding that with more bromine to get something else, to get a different compound. But in general, this is the only equation that you would need. So that's a look at some two, or two groups here of phosphorus halides and a, just a brief look at how they are produced.